Today's video is part three, or I guess version three, where I just find some of your failures online, go through them and give my opinion about what I think is going on. Hopefully these types of videos really help everyone out a lot to troubleshoot your own failures or failures of the others within the community. And with that, let's get going. All right, here's a big chunky piece of terrain. And when I look at it, I just can't immediately see that there's uh, internal structure inside this thing. Looks like some very interesting lattice structure, uh, like it was meant for FDM. Definitely like, this is crazy. So, you know, have you heard, it's, you know what I'm reminded of this is the um, Tesla valve. You know what the Tesla valve is? It basically creates uh, pockets of high pressure and low pressure. So like fluid can't, can't pass, can only pass one direction even though it's completely open. This type of lattice structure is like a thousand little valves like that. There's so many resin pockets, probably so much pressure created in this thing that just blew apart. So yeah, if you're gonna hollow your models, uh, make sure you hollow them properly. Again, resort to the video and um, yeah, shouldn't have a problem anymore. This is 100% a pressure issue caused by suction cups. All right, on this one right here, we've got the ball. This is the ball that comes on pre-installed on the, any, the new Anycubic, I think since the M5S, M5 Pro, M7. Uh, I actually don't know if it's on the M7 or not. I think it is. But anyway, it's their little ball they have there. Uh, now, the way this ball works is it's like pre-sliced, so you just print it. And the concern of this person is the support damage is way too high. So I think those two things come together. Uh, well, there's one other thing going on here. I know what this ball should look like. I've printed it myself. I've seen lots of pictures. It actually has pretty good detail, much better detail than what I'm seeing here, which tells me this is a extreme overexposure issue. Now also that print that comes on the Elegoo printer, or sorry, the Anycubic printer, is designed to be fast. It's like a showcase to say, look how fast our printers are. And it's way overexposed as to give you a good feeling of success. So like the first print you do off your printer, it always works and it's super fast, which doesn't always mean it's gonna look good. And so I think probably this user is using a resin that cured a little bit faster than the one that the settings were intended to, or their printer was just, the UV light was just a little bit hotter than maybe some of the other ones were. And it caused this uh, issue. We can see here, this is not the ball, but definitely looks way overexposed still. Those support tips are just massively fused here. This one, a lot of support damage. On this last one, it kind of tells the same story. Tons of support damage. Now, I don't know if they are, if he's removing the supports after curing, because that would definitely explain this guy right here. Um, so always make sure that you remove your supports before you cure, uh, after you clean though. So clean, that way there's not a bunch of resin on the supports while you're removing them in case they like, you know, puncture your glove and stab you. You don't want to get liquid resin in your blood. And it's not good. So yeah, remove your supports after cleaning, but before curing, because otherwise it will be really difficult. But I think this 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 could be the issue that they remove the supports in the wrong order, and definitely overexposed and probably no light after lay and really fast settings because they're probably using the settings that came on the printer, and those print those settings again are designed to impress you with speed, not with quality. So that's probably the issue there. All right, and this next one, it's kind of interesting. If I look at this one, it's like, well, what is this supposed to be? Is it supposed to be like an Allen wrench holder or something? Um, definitely looks like there's some weird things going on with peeling, but what is it supposed to look like? Uh, so this one, we wouldn't, we really wouldn't know unless we saw what it's supposed to look like. So if you're posting your pictures of failures, always post what it's supposed to look like and your settings, that always helps so much. On this one, I don't know what the settings are, but I do know what it's supposed to look like. So, hey, you did that one correctly. Now this can be caused by two major issues, uh, independently major issues. The one could be the file, the .stl is bad and you have a reversed normal. A reversed normal in the raft could cause this. If you don't know what a reversed normal is, go look that up. It's a little out of context for this particular video. It's a little complicated, but just know that it could definitely cause this issue, a corrupt or damaged STL or a leaky STL. The next one is data issues. So data issues comes in a few different flavors. One of them could be that while it was slicing, there was uh, the computer had a driver crash or you know some sort of holdup, and the basically the very first image in the PNG stack was the raft, and it just kept putting that same image from A to Z. I've seen it a few times. Uh, it's a little more rare, but I've definitely seen it enough. The next type of data error is uh, data corruption. So the slice your, your computer technically did the slice properly, but there was corruption when saving the file. Either you saved it directly to the USB, which greatly it, extends where that can happen or the USB has just, you know, died over time. That happens quite a bit or something just happened while it was saving it. Uh, and so the way to check on that one is if you have this issue, take the file on the USB and run it through UV tools and look at the layers. 
if you see some issue there, that would tell you that the slice was bad. The next thing, and probably the one I see the least often, but still have seen it multiple times, is where the printer itself just kind of, it kind of just took a dump. Um, and what happens here is the LCD gets stuck on layer one and just continues to print layer one forever. The way to fix that is just reboot the printer, turn it off for about 30 seconds, turn it back on. Now, way you can know if this is the issue is remove the build plate, then remove the vat. Uh, build plate first, because you don't want to drip resin on your LCD. You know, you don't want it clean. And then if you look at your LCD, even if it's not on, you might see like the image of like this right here. You can kind of peer into the LCD through it. It's, it's really interesting. You can, it's like le slightly more transparent. That will know. But of course, if you try printing the same print again, and if it just does the same thing over and over, then you know it's probably the LCD is stuck. Again, re reboot the printer, turn it back on, run the print again. And if it starts working properly, that was the whole issue the whole time. I've had, I had one Anycubic, I think this is Anycubic actually. Uh, it is an Anycubic printer, yeah. So it seems to happen more often on Anycubic. I had uh, my original M6, um, M, or the Mono X6K did this somewhat frequently, like somewhat, not very frequently. So what I started doing is I would reboot my Anycubic printer before I used it every time. And I never had the issue again. So um, if you have this issue on yours often, that's how you get around it, just reboot it. It sucks, but it's better than getting a brick of resin. So there you go. Uh, one thing is, as I have seen users say, this is an issue with the LCD dying. It's not an issue with the LCD dying. That looks very different. Either you get a completely full brick of resin when the LCD completely dies and just is transparent, or you get a bunch of like spaghetti lasagna stuff when it like fully dies. A very different um, look than this. This is definitely more of a data corruption issue, slicing issue. Or like I said, the, the printer kind of just took a dump um, and rebooting it fixes it. And here's another one where it really pays to, to pay close attention, have that magic eye and look at everything. So the first thing, this is a Saturn IV Ultra. So we can assume what we already know about that printer and with the way the springs work. But the next, there's two other things that are really, really important we can see. And if you picked them out, I congratulate you. The first one is that in the center, the raft is polished and thin on the left side, I guess there's three things. On the left side, the rafts are thin and everything printed. On the right side, the rafts are thick and bumpy. So what does that all mean, right? Especially on this particular printer. Well, that means a lot. In fact, that kind of tells me the entire story of what's going on here. Now, if you don't know this, at the, at the center of the most build plates, they're kind of concaved a little bit. And on the LCD, they're like convex a little bit. So that creates like a, a little pocket, like a little hot pocket there in the center. And so what happens there is that the resin has to cure deeper in order to make a connection between the bill plate and the LCD. Now on the very first layers, when the UV exposure time is really, really high, that's relatively easy to cure that depth and make the connection. But as you go up further and you go to transition layers, it becomes more difficult for the resin to, for the UV light to penetrate and cure as deeply. And as you go through the normal layers, it becomes practically impossible. Now again, this is a printer that has a spring-loaded build plate that flexes. And we've got some rafts here on the side that are really, really thick, which means here on the side, we're getting layers that are much too thick, creating this hot pocket in the center to become a bigger hot pocket without the UV exposure time to penetrate all the way through and make a connection, which is why it failed first and it's nice and clean and polished. Eventually, these ones on the side failed due to kind of the same issue you're just getting too thick of everything. So how do you resolve this? Well, it's gonna take a couple things. One, the Saturn IV Ultra can kind of be leveled. The way that works is you just take your paper in four corners. There's four um, bolts that you untighten. A little bit weird that you untighten bolts that are linear to the pulling forces, but whatever. Um, engineer type of me is screaming on that one, but whatever. So you, you loosen the bolts up a little bit. And what that does is it changes the pressure on the springs to be a little bit more consistent so those papers are have slightly more even pressure. The next thing, of course, is light off delay. You have to add a lot of, a lot of light off delay, especially if you're gonna load your build plate up, especially if you have a build plate that's more concaved than some others. Doing those two things should make your Saturn IV Ultra run a lot more consistently and help eliminate a lot of these issues so you can get better prints. All right, and looking at this one right here, this is on a frozen printer. And this is an issue I haven't seen in a good while. This is that stringiness. Now the stringiness is most often caused by resin that isn't mixed up or old resin, uh, or resin that got some contamination in it. That's the number one cause for this. So just mix it up, use that silicone spatula, you know, not scratch, don't damage the release film, mix it up and try it again. Now there is one more thing that can cause this type of stringiness, and that is a data error. 
uh, most specifically a data error on in relation to the motherboard and the LCD. This is what we call the anti-aliasing error. Let's see here, though I don't really see it on stuff like this. Um, well, actually no. Um, I don't think this is a resin mixture error. I think it's an anti-aliasing error. And the reason is this line right here. So the way to, to, to solve the anti-aliasing error is to make sure the models aren't in a row. If you've got a bunch of models, put them in a checkered pattern versus a row pattern. And that kind of mostly solves the, the data corruption error. The reason why it happens is it has to do with gray values of pixels white and gray and black. And there's, if there's too many in a row, the LCD, or sorry, the, the printer's RAM and processor can't do it. And it just kind of crashes the LCD. It starts to kind of glitch out and do some crazy stuff. So me seeing a line of resin right here uh, tells me this is probably most likely the that that glitch. Now the glitch we call the anti-aliasing error because it can happen most often with anti-aliasing and dot goo. This is a frozen motherboard, so it's not running dot goo. Uh, be resin the dot um, CTB or the PRZ for the frozen, uh, but it can still happen on any Chichu Systems motherboard, and the frozen uses Chichu Systems, so yes, most likely that is the cause here. The way to resolve this is try running the print without anti-aliasing if you're using anti-aliasing or again, make sure if you've got like lines, straight lines um, or a bunch of prints that are lined up, shuffle around on the board like a checkered pattern, make sure your straight lines, you kind of angle them a little bit so they're not in rows of pixels. And that pretty much makes it much, much more difficult to ever run into the anti-aliasing error that I'm pretty sure that caused this issue. Now this next one is a little bit interesting. This is one where the user didn't print these, they were send them, they bought them online and they showed up. And the user was complaining that they were very sticky and tacky. I think they even said they left them out in the sun for a day or two and they were still tacky. Three specific issues in, uh, that I've noticed just by looking at these pictures and let me tell you what they are. So the first one of course is if your resin, if your prints are tacky after you've cured them, that means your uh, mixture, your cleaning solution is dirty and it's time to replace it. For me, I use multiple buckets. So the first one is like black and dirty and then it goes clean and pretty much pristine at the end. So my prints always come out beautiful, but if you can't do that, like multiple buckets is just too much for you. Just when you start getting them looking like this or they're still tacky, just know that means it's time to replace it. The next issue we have here is that the, the quality isn't great on these ones. They're definitely overexposed. If it was an FDM printer, I think it would look great, but for resin, Resin's beautiful and I really love the technology and it can it can really look a lot better than this one. So make sure you calibrate your resin properly and really get that beautiful pop and shine from your minis. The next one was a little bit harder to detect. I noticed it right here, mostly only on these legs. And you'll see that like stretch mark kind of a weird texture on the legs right there. To me, what this says is that the release film of this particular printer is not in good shape. It's overused, it's stretching. It's As it's stretching, it's creating those um, kind of stretch patterns on it. I would think the LCD, it looks like the LCD and, and is probably sticky and dirty as well. That's why we're getting some weird texture issues there. So I think overall we have a printer that's probably not in the best uh, maintenance condition and definitely a solution that is long needed to be replaced and some calibration that needs to be done. So anyway, if you have prints that look like that, that's all the different steps you need to do to go through and well, make them look better. And moving on to that whole like cleaning thing, I'm pretty sure this po this user posted these because they were having these flat and they didn't know what these were. Just so you know, this is a flat island right here. That's the cause, an island that wasn't properly or not supported. So it kind of flattened out and made that thing. If you don't know, islands that are left unsupported don't stick, don't stay in the printer and you know damage the film. They get picked up later on and they just create these flat spots. But I also want to show this one to talk also again about cleaning. I've seen some users say to get rid of the white stuff, use a toothbrush. But if you don't know, the resin is quite soft and can scratch quite easily before post curing. So again, just make sure your cleaning solution is good and clean and you shouldn't end up with all this white stuff. Uh, just remember, you can't clean a toilet with dirty toilet water or don't try it, it's disgusting. You can't clean your print with dirty cleaning solution. It just doesn't work. All right, and here on this girl, we've got a few strange things here. Now, I added this one because I think it's important to, to kind of realize how much one part of the build plate affects the rest of the build plate. And let me show you what I mean by that. So right here, we've got some hollowing holes, probably one of the key as well. But up until this bottom key and below it is a suction cup. Now, if we look at over here, that's about the same level of where these supports here failed. Uh, I don't know how these were positioned on the build plate, but there's a chance this one was close to this one. And so that first suction cup is going to create a lot of pressure again as the build plate moves down into the resin. It creates, it makes it so it can't push down all the way 
as well. And of course, lifting up, it creates a lot of peeling forces and suction forces. And it's going to create some issues for you. I think that's why we got some failure here lower down. But higher up, we also got a lot of failure across the whole thing. Here on our face, I think the only reason why this hair printed is because it was in an upward swing. If it was still going downwards, we would have seen some more failure on the hair. But moving over here, we've got some, what looks to me like some big suction cups and some weird lattice structure inside here. This is definitely a suction cup. There's no nothing in there. I assume this one is as well. And basically this suction cup right here and maybe this little one right here affected the entire build plate and it will affect the entire build plate, which caused the failure of everything. So just make sure if you're gonna use hollowing, use it correctly. I've got another video on how to hollow your prints on the Lighty Slicer YouTube channel, go check that out. And you should be good to go and not run into issues like this anymore. And this one's really interesting. I wanted to show this one. This is one I actually helped this user out a really long time ago, like six months or so. And uh, this user found a way to make resin look like FDM. Uh, not really. Uh, but what I found out is that this printer was like one of the original Anycubic printers, like the original Photon. And the Photon can obviously do better prints than this. What it turned out to be was that the lead screw backlash nut uh, was just worn out. And so again, this is just to show you a point where you see these like layer lines or wobbliness. It's most likely something that's moving on X and Y that's not supposed to. I've seen like entire Z screws wobble. I've seen an entire motors wobble. I've seen everything at this point. But if you see layer lines like that one, look at physical, look for something that's moving on X, Y that's not supposed to move. And that you'll generally find the issue just by doing that. All right, on this next one right here, we've got a print that failed to hold on to the build plate. Um, and it only failed to hold on to it on one side, not the whole side. So what does that tell us? Well, there's one thing I would like to know from this user, and that is, how did it feel to scrape this part off, the part that did hold? Did it come right off really easily, or did it hold pretty well? If it held pretty well, it doesn't need more burn-in UV exposure time. It's working just fine. It's just an out-of-level issue. And given that this printer is the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra, or 3, I believe, uh, it's got, uh, I think it's the 3 Ultra. It, um, I know that printer very well. It's a little hard to level. Because of this printer, I actually designed a part that you put on top of the build plate of a printer, add a little weight to it, and when you level it, it makes it so the pressure is really consistent. The great thing about this printer is once you get it leveled properly, it's like that forever. It works beautifully. The next thing I would do is after leveling it is I would run these little build plate calibration parts that I have. There's five of them. You arrange like a five dice. You measure them just to make sure you're level. When all that's good, I think this is gonna be a printer that runs beautifully for a very long time. All right, and I think that about sums it up for this one. I hope again that you learned something valuable from this video, and if you could, please like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone who you might be thinking is struggling with 3D printing. It really does help out a lot to get all your feedback for both us and Lychee to do a better job, as well as to help our YouTube channel grow so we can reach a bigger audience and help more and more people. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a good day. Yeah, yeah.